Well, welcome everybody to uh, the Northampton Planning Board meeting of January 13th, 2022. A little typo on our agenda. I've been doing that for months, for about a month now. January 13th, I actually corrected that for the official agenda on the calendar. <laughs> Good. Good. So um, we only have a few very a few items on the agenda. Uh, the largest one will be a public hearing on zoning amendments, so really some housekeeping changes. But before we get to that, we'll open the the podium, so to speak, for anyone from the public who would like to comment on other items in the city not related to this these housekeeping changes. Is there anyone who'd like to comment? I, I'd actually like to make a quick comment. Um, so I, this is my first, I'm going through my first uh, project of demoing a property and it is a massive uh, project uh, in Northampton. And I think something that we should look into is uh, potentially making it easier and streamlining it, um, you know, put, putting in place stops when needed, but it is a huge cost and I'm not, not sure it needs to be. Thanks, Sam. But, All right, and Sam, just for the record, so we treat everyone the same, what's of course. your address? Uh, yeah, uh, 245 North Street, Northampton. Okay, thank you very much. Thank so you. We, we can talk about that at a further point and see whether yeah. it falls under the planning board jurisdiction or the, the building, building inspector, how that works. All right. Well, then at uh, it's now 708. Let's open a public hearing on zoning amendments relative to housekeeping changes to the zoning ordinance. Um, and this is a public hearing. Um, and Carolyn, as with other ordinances, we want to end this discussion with a recommendation to City Council. Yes, that's right. Um, so I can explain a little bit. Um, this was a carryover from last year. The, um, there was a council subcommittee that went through all the code of ordinances to do these little cleanups, um, make sure that things um, were referenced properly. And um, so, it took such a long time, they didn't quite get to it before the end of the last council, so they referred it to the new council um, and um, almost had it ready for December and then um, just couldn't squeeze it onto the agenda. So this is um, related to the zoning ordinances since all amendments to the zoning code require public hearing um, by the planning board and legislative matters. Um, yeah, it's, uh, this is the point at which you all then um, hold the public hearing, make a recommendation to full council, legislative matters, subcommittee of council also holds a public hearing and then makes a recommendation to full council and then it goes to the council floor. Um, just a note, it, it probably won't affect you so much, but council is sort of reorganizing how they do their voting on items. So um, they're not gonna be taking two consecutive readings and votes on ordinances. Um, they're gonna sort of split that up. And if anybody's interested in understanding that more, they can certainly attend council meeting. But um, if any of you had followed zoning ordinance amendments previously, you might remember that um, once the ordinance leaves your review and with your recommendation, it goes ultimately back to city council and the city council takes it up at, or had taken it up at two consecutive meetings and it would take two consecutive votes, um, which extends, um, can extend the timeline, of course, for um, adoption. Um, and so they've sort of uh, massaged that a bit. So that's going to look a little bit differently. It doesn't affect the outcome necessarily, but Anyway, just thought I'd let you know about that. Uh, and then 
just to, I don't know if anybody had the ability to look at these thing, um, these items, but they're amendments to our definition section, um, sort of updating language going from assisted living residents um, and replacing it with um, changing the phrase disabled residents to persons with disabilities. These are recommendations that also came from the Disability Commission, so they've looked at that. Um, also replacing throughout the code the term uh, development with sustainability to reflect the name, the official name of our office. Um, and there's some other accessibility, you know, updated language uh, around um, people who have accessibility issues um, and uh, to reflect the sort of um, more up-to-date terminology. Uh, so essentially, there are little bits in, um, I think there are 15 of these little sections of the code, um, and I'd be happy to um, go through particular ones or if you want to um, read through them all now, one by one, that's fine too, um, but they're pretty straightforward, um, really just um, edits. So. Carolyn, they do seem pretty straightforward. And the one that's repeated quite a few times replaced the word de development with sustainability. That has to do right. with your office. Right, right. Yeah, that's the one that shows up the most in this list. And the only one of substance is this one about the phrase 500 square feet of gross floor area up to a maximum of two per dwelling. Um, and then you struck that and just say, see this table here. Right. The, the, the one you were mentioning earlier, this it's at the top of the screen here, handicap access and replacing it with accessible wheelchair. It doesn't really make sense because that part of the, I mean, I don't know if you want to get back into the code where in our, in our Northampton code, it's, it's saying Handicap access ramps for access by the physically handicapped as defined by MGL chapter 40A section three are, accept, are exempt from these dimensional requirements. And they're saying, let's use different language from the state code. And it just doesn't make sense to add inconsistency just for, I guess they've determined like this is like more, I guess it's a political correct thing or something. I don't understand what's the point of in making an inconsistency with the state code on purpose when there's like a legal reason why those use the same terminology. Yeah, but so for that one in particular, um, let me just go pull, I can share that 6.2 with, um, just let me know if you see the screen change. Sure. It's in the table of dimension and density regulations. Yeah, I just need to, oops. Trying to get to my, um, well, here. I'm going to stop share because I can't. To be clear, I'm not trying to argue that the state wording of, of things makes any sense at all. I'm just saying we should be consistent with the state. Yeah. <laughs> the MGL. You know, it just, yeah. the, the, you expose all kinds of, there's all kinds of lawsuits all the time in accessibility. So it's just good to be consistent. Yeah. So let me put the, the small language problems that occur in state law. It's really, it's not good. I would agree with that sentiment. Um, okay, in fact, you know, I was just looking at that section for another, um, another it, reason and I can't seem to. It's in 356.2 section A. Just the, it's the header, it's the-, it's the Right, 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 got it. Okay, so here it is. So, um, uh, let's see. Yeah, okay, so you can see that too. It's right here, um, this section. Right, and MGL, I mean, I don't know if you have the state code handy, but <laughs> the state code, specifically calls it handicap access ramps. So I'm not saying they're right. I just, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, um, 
I guess that, I mean, really, it probably would be up to council. If you wanted to make a recommendation that we not change that language because it's linked to the state code, that's certainly, you know, an option for you all. You could also just, in the alternative, you could say for that one section of proposed amendments that you would ask the council to consider that, you know, if you don't necessarily feel strongly one way or the other, you could just highlight that for something that the city council can consider. You would also seem to be somewhat limiting if they're talking about ramps that um, people who are mobile impaired would also use walkers to go up a ramp or down a ramp and not just wheelchairs. But uh, right. Yeah, I mean, and they're sort of referring to that as well to say, I mean, when you, I mean, it's a pretty broad statement to say persons with disabilities anyway, you know, sort of covers, a, you know, that whole spectrum. Um, um, as to your point, George. Well, I, I think that's a good compromise to, uh, to highlight this one this one area and ask the city council to do the word smithing and notice that. Yeah, I mean, physically handicapped is what the state code says also. I mean, I don't, honestly, I don't really understand like if it actually has any bearing at all. I mean, if someone's 95 years old and they're physically handicapped, are they a person with disabilities? I'm not quite sure how that, like, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I know that there's like disability law and there's, you know, state benefits and things that go along with disability. I, I, I'm not an expert on this, but I would okay. just, I like things. That, when you go from one code to another, it's nice when things line up. So I know, yeah. I, that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are there any other changes on the list that made any members a little curious? Want to follow up on? If not, why don't we pause for a minute and turn to our uh, the other participants. And at this point, we'll open up the discussion to anyone from the audience who'd like to comment on this proposed zoning amendment. Nobody out there? All right. Okay. Um, is there a motion to close the public hearing? Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Thanks, Corinne. All right. Hello, Krista. So now as we're in a Zoom meeting, we need to do our roll call of by voice. Um, so the motion has been made and seconded to close the public hearing. Um, how do you feel about that, Melissa? Yes. And Chris? Yes. And David? Yeah. Corinne? Yes. And Jenna? Yes. Krista? Yes. Sam? Yes. And uh, George also votes yes. So the public hearing portion is closed. Any other comments or questions for Carolyn on these amendments? This is a very small, I feel, a George-like comment, but in the edits to 350-8.1, it says a maximum of two per dwelling unit development. Um, and I don't, I think that's just a typo. I think the word development is not actually in the language that it's correcting. Uh, the development with a capital D got cut and pasted from Another piece, yeah. <clears throat> so noted. So we're highlighting two areas in this document for the council to take a look at. Any other wordsmithing uh, notions out there? All right, is there a motion that someone would like to make about a recommendation to city council?
Uh, I would move to recommend uh, adoption of the zoning amendments relative to housekeeping changes uh, to the zoning ordinance with the uh, highlighted sections previously mentioned for their further consideration. Thank you. Second. Second by Melissa. Thank you. <clears throat> so we'll go to a voice vote. Um, let's start again with Melissa. Yes. And Chris. Yes. And David. Yep. Corinne. Yes. And Jenna. Yes. Krista. Yes. Sam. Yes. And George also for unanimous recommendation. Well, thanks, Carolyn, for laying that out for us. Sure. David for keeping us on our toes. <laughs> um, I don't think we have any A and R's, just so you know. Um, I'm just going to double check, um, make sure that I didn't miss anything. But I sort of have that on there as a standing because sometimes come, things come in after I post the agenda. Um, so, um, there's the minute of December yeah, 9th. Mm -hmm. Everybody had a chance to review those minutes. Is there a motion to accept or edit the minutes of December 9th? I'll move to accept the minutes of December 9th. I'll second that. Thank you, Melissa and Krista. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, let's go to a voice vote. We'll go a little backwards this time. Sam, how do you feel about those minutes? I love them. Okay, that's a thumbs up for approval, I guess. And Krista? Yes, love them. Jenna? Love them. Karen? Sounds good. Yes. It's David? I like them. <laughs> okay. All right. And Chris? Yes. And Melissa? Yes. Okay. And George says yes, unanimously approved. That's great. So the last two items have to do with our kind of our own board's housekeeping. Um, we have some committee assignments that we've taken on in the past. Carolyn sent out a list of those. We also have a, a vacancy for our vice chair. Um, why don't we take the, the vice chair first? You know that you remember that Marissa was our vice chair for the past year, perhaps when Alan Burson stepped down. And Marissa has since gone on to the city council. So, there's not a, a long history in the planning board of, you know, a hard electioneering around positions for the vice chair or the chair. Um, but this time we did have two people who kind of threw their hats in the ring and are interested in the position. Um, <clears throat> so both uh, Melissa and Jana were interested in perhaps filling that role. Um, is there anyone else who would like to throw their hat in the ring as a vice chair? At this time, nobody wants to fuck the big war chest of Jenna and Melissa. Okay. I like to have bribes for my book. <laughs> like that from the is minute. this is the vice chairmanship or chairpersonship uh, traditionally a stepping stone to city council? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's ever happened in the past that I'm aware of. Okay. It is a stepping stone to the chair's regal appointment, for sure. I mean, you know that city council are large, a stepping stone to the mayor. So this could be the next big move for one of you guys. Yeah. yeah. Does the chair get those cool headphones? I'm, I'm happy to pass those down. <laughs> um, 
And actually, you know, at this time, there could be a nomination for the chair also. I, I fully intend to do this for one more year and then step down. Um, but uh, let's, let's just deal with this vice chair now. So um, is there a nomination from the floor? Our vice chair. I actually am. I'm gonna waive my offer in lieu of Jana. I'm more than happy. Love to get behind Jana on it. So, and that takes it makes makes it easier. Thank you very much, Melissa. I tried to do the same that. for Melissa earlier. We had a very funny <laughs> <laughs> back and forth. <laughs> yeah. I was about to nominate both of you. <laughs> Co-vice president. Co-vice like, chair. Sounds like Rome. I'll go, I'll take vice vice. I second Melissa's nomination for right. Jana. No, okay, so. Well then, uh, um, Jana, uh, Jana White is up for election as the vice chair. Um, all those in favor of Jana, uh, boy, I, I think we can do a hand raise. I don't know if, uh, this is a voice vote, but <laughs> congratulations, Jan and Melissa. Thank you very much. There was a lot of smoky backroom politicking going on <laughs> over the past three hours. And yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Glad it worked out. Okay, go. <laughs> Thank you. And and at this point, I'm certainly the floor is open for anyone who would like to nominate someone for the chair, other than the the guy with the big ear earmuffs on. All right, here and none, I'll keep going for another year. Thank you very much. Well, wait, uh, you're so officially you're putting your name in for nomination and then can someone second that? And then we can do a- We have to re-nominate George? Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I will nominate uh, George to continue his, his iron grip. <laughs> <laughs> I will second that. All right. And then we actually do need a roll call. So I can, I'd be happy to do that. Um, Melissa? Yes. Um, Corinne? Yes. Uh, Chris? Yes. David? White yes. Chris Trigonaut? Yes. Jana White? Yes. Sam Taylor? Yes. And George Kohauer. How do you yes. vote? Yes. Okay. So that was unanimous too. All right. Thank you very much, Jana, for stepping up for that. And uh, best of luck for the duties while I'm off camping this summer. <laughs> um, and then maybe you could put up on the screen for us, Carolyn, the, the, the kind of committee. We, we have some outgoing commitments or representatives to various boards in the city and the region. Yep. Um, so this is last year's uh, do you see it? Committee list. I can zoom in. Whoops. Hold on. Whoa. Um, so we have Capital Improvements Committee, which is not it meets in the fall, starting in the fall. So that's finished for now. Pioneer Valley Planning Commission uh, technical staff review for bigger projects that are. Um, potentially coming forward in front of the board and then community preservation committee. So for that, I'll start, I just wanna do an FYI for that one. Um, Jana stepped up last spring to actually fill in Alan's, um, Alan Burson's slot, but now um, a renomination is necessary because that time, that term ended anyway. So, um, that one, you know, Jana just started, so I don't know if you're, you, you know, how the board feels about um, that. Um, but I know that one is definitely, we need um, a nomination sooner than later for that because the second, the new round for 2022 is starting up. So we'd wanna make sure that um, we had representation for that, for starting that round. So I will nominate Jana to continue her, or is that what we're saying? Jana wants to continue? 
I'm fine to continue for now. I would just say that um, if, and this is a big if, but um, if George does indeed step down as chair in a year or so, and if I were to become chair at that point, I would not want to stay on the CPC at that point. So if somebody else is eager to participate, um, I am experiencing and had heard from others of you who've been on the committee that it is a bit of a learning curve. So if somebody wants to kind of dive in now to start that process, I'm fine with that too. So again, I'm happy to continue for the time being, but um, may not want to have both in the future. So do with that what you will. Well, I would say, Jenny, you really just got your feet wet in it the first time. And I, I know both David and I have had a chance to be through a bit of it. So I think it would be good for you to have one more year at it to get that kind of grounded in the dealings. And, <clears throat> and it's actually good for the committee, too, that there's not a big turnover all the time that we put, put someone else in. So I would second your nomination for, for that role. Fine by me. So then you'd have to do roll call for that too. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So it's a recommendation for Dana White to continue as our CPC representative. Um, Melissa. Yes. And Chris. Yes. And David. Yes. And Jana. Yes. And Sam. Yes. And Krista. Yes. Already. Yes. And George says yes also. Carolyn, I have a couple of just uh, sort of technical questions for you about that. So maybe we can stay on for two minutes at the end so I can ask them. Sure. Yeah, thanks. And Carolyn, I wonder for the, um, the capital improvements, if in fact the mayor does reinstitute it, it'd be nice to have somebody ready to go for that. Yeah, um, absolutely. So it would be nice for one of the members um, to step up for that. I think there's any number here who's got some good, Melissa would be. I'll, yeah, I'll do it. Okay. All right, any other self-nominations? Be good. All right. So again, we'll go through a voice vote. Um, those who are in favor of Melissa Fowler filling up the training board's role for the capital improvements. Uh, let's start with Krista. Yes. And Corinne. Yes. And George says yes. And Melissa. Yes, I'm happy to volunteer for the committee that doesn't currently exist. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's a big stipend with it. And Chris. Yes. David. Yes. Jana. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I should I, I should actually add that uh, I think most Marissa told me outside of this forum that uh, that she found it actually to be a very interesting conversation. And I think Gina Louise was quite involved. Um, but it was like unclear how her involvement should be because I, I can't remember how the timing was. I think it was after the election. Um, but I think it's a, it sounded like it was probably going to exist and be an interesting conversation. Yep. It's, it's very interesting to see how the budgets are kind of wrangled over because it is the big capital budget, but you get to hear a lot about the different city departments. Um, and I made a little comment about stipends there, but just for the public to know, nobody on the planning board gets a stipend for this role or any other role. Yeah, right. We're all volunteers, unfortunately. We don't get health benefits or sick time. Um, what else do we have left? David's going to continue as our rep to the Pioneer Valley Regional Planning Committee. Um, okay. I can if if no one else wants to do it, I, I actually find it's constantly uh, annoying because it's always at the same time as one of our meetings. It, it usually overlaps. I usually end up going, it's usually like an hour before our meetings, but they go on for a long time and I usually leave early. Um, but there's some interesting ones, some less interesting ones. A lot of uh, 
rules of order, etc. <laughs> Okie doke. Well, the, the David's been nominated and accepted to be our rep to the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. I guess we'll go through a voice, voice vote again. Okay. Let's start with Melissa this time. Yes. And Chris? Yes. David? Okay. Jenna? Yes. <laughs> and Sam? Yes. And Krista? Yes. And Corinne? Yes. And George certainly says yes also. Um, Carolyn, in the way in the past, I may have brought this up again, the, the planning board also had a rep, I think, for the housing partnership, but we don't, there's not a, a seat there for us, correct? Um, so a couple of years ago, there was a conversation, actually, Alan Burson was sitting on that in that space and there wasn't a lot of activity the housing partnership was um, um was working on at the time and i think there was a decision made that um they would invite planning staff to one of their meetings to do an update instead of having <clears throat> a regular rep come from the planning board because um uh uh, they felt like that might be more productive to instead of having sort of every month having someone from the planning board show up that maybe um, just quarterly have an update about sort of what's going on. So I don't know if there was officially what I can look at is I don't think there's an officially a slot on housing partnership, but let me just well, um, I mean, maybe we can do the next uh, the technical staff review, and I can just pop open the committee assignment for a housing partnership and see what it says. It, if that works. It, it seems to me it's such a big topic in relation to housing and development in the city and planning. There's a lot of projects that have happened that that it would be a very profitable for both boards or committees to to have that kind of representation, you know, because I, I don't think since Alan left, we've had, we've been able to schedule any of those updates. Um, and I know when I served on the housing partnership, I was able to help some of the members with the whole process for applications and planning board reviews and things like that. Um, and certainly I think we could learn a lot from what the housing partnership looks like. I'm not trying to add more work to all to the volunteers on the planning board, but I, I thought it was uh, rewarding for me personally, and also it helped when I reported back to the board on their discussions. So if you wanted to look at that, is Sarah LaValle the staff person to housing partnership? No, it's Keith, um, who Benoit, who took over, who took the position that Peg Keller formerly had um, before and after she retired. Um, so the body, the housing partnership is comprised of 11 members um, representing um, people across um, the real estate industry and housing, as well as city boards and commissions, including planning and or zoning board. So what I can do is, um, I don't know if they have full membership yet. I, I mean, the bottom line is, um, I think that they, it would, they, the partnership would probably find it helpful to understand what issues are in front of the planning board. Um, I don't think there would be the objection to having a planning board rep again, because sort of that was the regular thing until a couple of years ago when it seemed like uh, at least the way Alan presented it was, it wasn't very, uh, he didn't feel like he was, um, there was a lot of interaction and um, productive sort of conversation that he could bring from the planning board. So, um, you know, we can certainly put that slot on and if, um, someone 
uh, wants to participate as the rep from the planning board to housing partnership, they meet once a month on Mondays. I have to figure out which day it is. I can look on the calendar right now. They're sort of on an extended, they're only going to meet once every six weeks for the spring, uh, for the period now, we we're having some staffing shortages. Keith is actually out on medical leave. So we're, um, we've kind of spread out the timeline so that we can cover that gap a little bit more easily. So um, it certainly wouldn't be regular meetings right now. Okay, so, um, so you could check into it, we could just, come back and revisit this again at our next meeting. There probably wouldn't be time for that. Well, let me ask, is there anyone on, on the board who doesn't have one of these outside commitments who the housing partnership kind of rings a bell or strikes a chord? It might want to, if not, it's kind I'd of- be happy to if nobody else wants to, but I'm not attached to it. Thanks, Corinne. So, Let's leave it like that, that we have a warm, interested body who would like to share with the uh, housing partnership and be a kind of our conduit back and forth to them. I, I do think it's important. And, and I don't want to seed every committee in town, transportation and parking, the Veterans Affairs, the Disability Committee. I don't think all of those need a planning board rep, but I think the housing part, because of affordable housing and the importance um, our city, I, I just think it's a really good overlap with our planning. Hmm. So I can certainly confirm the here the meeting dates at the next meeting, and you all can decide that. Um, and then um, I'll just to sort of go over the last committee, which is the technical review committee, meets when necessary, if there are big projects, and it's usually first thing in the morning. Um, we haven't had, well, we did have one meeting that actually we started meeting in person and then we've pulled back and we're back to Zoom for at least till, I think till mid-February. I don't know that there's another, we don't have another scheduled meeting yet, but um, it's, um, you know, that typically it's Tuesday morning um, at 7.30 or 8, depending on how many projects. We only look at two projects at a time, half hour at the most. So if there's only one project gone for that day, I usually slot it at the um, 8 a.m. instead of 7.30. And um, then everything's completed usually by 8.30. Um, and it's really just to give a feedback to applicants about what things they're going to need to provide in their application. Sometimes projects um, move forward, sometimes they don't. So it's not always a guarantee that the projects that are viewed are actually going to go anywhere. Um, and the part of the committee also is has representation from the fire department, DPW, um, the building department. Um, Conservation Commission and Economic Development. Thank you, Bill. Can, and I offered to be that because I think I'm the only retired bloke on this team who never has anything going on at 7 30 in the morning <laughs> while the rest of you are getting ready for work or already hours into work. So that was one reason why I kind of said I'd be happy to do it. And I know Sam has also been part of that in the past. Yeah, I, the reason I, I, I enjoy the, I, I enjoy it. And we can only have one person from the planning board. So that's why in case someone can't make it, there's a backup. All right. So, Sam, does it does it fit your schedule of seven thirties when they when they do have those meetings? Uh, yeah, generally, I'm gonna make my own schedule. But yes. Okay. All right. So I'm happy to be the backup then. 
Um, if Sam's not available, I'll fill in for him on Tuesday. Great. Wonderful. All right. Do you have anything else in front of us? Don't. Okay. Um, just a, a, like I mentioned at the beginning, we next in two weeks we'll have a public forum. We're going to um, invite, you know, this is for Florence Center and downtown. So it's going, they'll, uh, we're going to send out notice to the DNA, the chamber, Florence Civic and Business, um, builders, realtors, sort of the whole range of um, residents, city councilors, their listservs, sort of everybody we can hit. Um, so, um, you know, there'll be um, lots of squares on the screen, hopefully. Great. It's a very exciting topic. I can see why a lot of people will be there. <sighs> or everybody, you'll send a link to us for some kind of latest draft. Yes, okay. um, the draft, I'm gonna send the notice for the meeting first because the consultants are still working on the draft. It probably won't be ready till next week. It'll be on the web. Well, I'll put it up on the web page as soon as it, we get it. And that's in two weeks? Yes. All right. Well, thanks everybody for showing up this Monday night. I had one more question. I don't know if anyone knows this or uh, Jana, maybe you heard about this um, on the, that the O'Connell development is applying for CPC funding for a restoration of the St. John Cantius church. And there's going to be some, I assume that means that they're going to come back as a multifamily building here to this body at some point. There doesn't seem to be anything in the, in the file on like what they're proposing. There's just like an eligibility form for CPC. Right. So that's, as you remember, probably that's always the first step is just sort of putting in the concept and there's no real uh, backing to that. So they're just testing the waters. You know, we've been encouraging them to look at um, alternative fundings for preservation. So um, that, I guess it depends on you know, the original permit that the board approved showed the reuse of that church. So I, um, you know, we'd go back and look at, it may not need planning board approval um, because the site plan approved already, you know, was for the reuse of the church. So it's only if they change the number of units or something like that. Uh, no, because there's no minimum lot size. Um, okay. it's, uh, so I can't get, I don't know what they're proposing to do. So I can't tell you. Okay. I, I thought the site plan we approved did not have to do with the church that they sort of described what they were talking about, but that what we approved didn't cover that part of the property. Am I misremembering? It didn't, they did not have a use. Their goal was to save the church, but the site plan showed the church. So any okay. use that's allowed in the zoning may very well be allowed by right and not need any, you know, approval by the board. So a new use comes into any building downtown, the planning board doesn't really see it necessarily. Um, so it just, it really depends on whether there are site changes or if the use they're proposing triggers a permit. Got it. Well, when we were talking, when the CPC met at the end of, or I guess it was mid-December to talk about this next round of funding uh, the chair asked for an update from Sarah about what projects were we were anticipating and that project was not on the list at that time. So the article in the Gazette was news to me and I think to the rest of the board as well that they were exploring that prospect. Right. So yeah, there's all only I know like, is what I read about it. I think there's only three eligibility forms in the, in the file. So yeah, it might be a light, uh, light session. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Any other questions, comments for the board? Is there a motion to adjourn? So uh, moved. Second. All right. Thank you very much. So we're motion to adjourn at seven fifty.
Um, let's have a vote, voice, roll call. Uh, Melissa. Yes. And Chris. Yes. Corinne. Yes. And David. Yep. Jana. Yes. Krista. Yes. Sam. Yes. George, yes. So it's unanimous. Thanks, Carolyn. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.